Today I'm showing you guys how to make this multi-purpose meter to keep track of loads that say maybe a travel trailer is using. You can keep track of watts and amps and also kilowatt hours as well or maybe see how much load is being put on your generator. You're going to need a few parts such as this 4x4x2 junction box along with some 10 by 3 wire. We're also going to use a 30 amp RV plug and receptacle as well and then you'll also need the new meter. but. You could also wire it up to something else, maybe some 20 amp plugs as well. It all depends on what you need. So to get started, we're going to need a few things like electrical tape, a wire nut, also a 5 8 hole saw. We're going to use this caliper to do some measuring, some wire strippers, something to cut the wire with. Here's a different set of wire strippers. Also some wire is needed as well, like 14 gauge, 16 will work, along with a flathead and a Phillips screwdriver. Let's go ahead and open that box up and then we'll just remove the lid, get your gasket out, go ahead and take those screws and we'll take the box and just set them aside. We're going to start off with the lid. So let's go ahead and get that new meter out and we're going to do some measurements on this and this is the one that happens to have a hall sensor, that little guy where the wire will run through the middle. And then you can take a look in the instructions in here, it actually gives you the full measurements. So with this meter here, we're going to end up taking a caliper and do some measuring, and we'll actually measure out those little tabs here in just a bit. So with this guy, we'll just kind of measure what our height is going to be. And it doesn't have to be super tight. You can leave it just a pinch loose. And I don't want that label there because I'm going to knock that out. So that's where I'm going to make my cut is on the upper end of the lid. So now we're get our length. Try to make sure that you're in the middle of the lid. And then we're going to tape everything off so we have a nice cut line. Now that we've got that taped off, we'll just tuck everything in. It'll look like that. We'll use a cutoff wheel and also a little side cutter bit. Go ahead and start making your cuts. And feel free to pause this video also at any time. And just go ahead and take your time during this part. There's no reason to rush. And after we're done, we'll go ahead and get those little pieces of plastic off. And you can go ahead and remove the tape now if you want. Now we're going to take a file and do a little cleanup. And don't forget to take off these green wires before we do our test fit. So now we're going to test fit this guy real quick just to kind of put it inside. So you can see that slides in real nice. Now we're going to mark out those tabs. Go ahead and do that on each side. Now we're going to get that little side cutter bit. And you don't have to take off a lot. You can always come back and take off a little bit more. You only need to take off about two millimeters. Go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup with your file. Now we'll just kind of slide this guy in. Boom, look at that. Flush, real clean, looks good. And we're done with the lid. Now we'll go ahead and move on to the box. And so with this guy, what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and put that in there real quick, just so you can see. Now instead of having these guys going side to side, I decided to turn it like this, that way the little mount holes are up and down because I don't wanna drill through that part. I want to go through a nice flush side here, but you can do it the other way, I guess. One thing is don't draw your hole in the middle because all your wires and the wire itself will be in the way. You see how the battery meter or test meter is actually down inside? That's why you want to drill off to the side. And when you're doing this part, make sure you hold on to the box really well because that hole saw can catch and fling that box right out of your hand. Now that we've got both of those holes cut, you can go ahead and do a test fit with your wire. Now this side goes in really easy, but if you look at this side, it's actually really tough. So just take your drill back in there, go ahead and oblong the hole just a pinch, and that'll be enough to run the wire right through. So now we're gonna go ahead and fold this in half. You don't have to kink it all the way, we just wanna find the middle. And I'm gonna mark it with a piece of tape. After marking that, now I'm gonna take a pencil and this is gonna be the area of the outer sheet that I'm gonna cut off because I'm not gonna cut this in half. If you want, you could cut this in half and then strip it from there if that makes it easier and you can just use three wire nuts. It all depends. 
Now this is actually pretty easy. It's not that hard, but be careful as to not cut yourself. A good utility knife or razor blade will work as we just kind of cut through the outer sheath. And then this stuff is really easy to kind of work with. You just kind of slice right down the middle and then you'll see here in a second, you can just pull this apart. So now after we get this peeled off, we're gonna go ahead and cut these little bands off. And now that we got all three of those off, we're gonna go ahead and cut the white neutral wire. And then you could strip the ends of these now, but we're also gonna open up the sheath on the black wire as well. And after this gets exposed, you'll see why in just a minute or two that we open that up because we're gonna wrap a wire around that guy. So after shoving these both in, you can actually push them both together to gain a little bit more working room and slack. And you could always strip off a little more, but when we put this guy on, this is a hall sensor. You want this on the supply side, wherever your power comes from, whether it's the house or a generator, the green wires should go to the right, which is on the hall sensor there. That's just how this particular meter works. So just to take note. So now we're going to go ahead and take this red wire. This is going to be an accessory wire and we're going to cut off about, oh, maybe eight inches. It just gives us a lot of extra room to work with the meter. Go ahead and strip the end. Now we're going to take the red wire and we're going to tie it up with the other two white wires with our neutral wire. So all three ends are going to go together. This is where you get the wire nut. Go ahead and twist that on there real tight and then pull on them to make sure that they don't come apart. Then we'll go ahead and move on to the power wire. So our black wire, what we did is we opened that sheath and we're going to add this black wire to it as well. So go ahead and cut off the same length, strip off the end. And now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this wire around the black one. And on this video, I ended up twisting the wire from the backside. You probably couldn't see it. But after you twist that and wrap it around, it'll be nice and flush like that. Go ahead and get a black piece of electrical tape. And then as you wrap this around, make sure you put some tension on it to make it nice and tight. The way it holds it in place really well. Now that we got that done, we're pretty much done with wiring the box. Now you can see why you want the wires down low and not in the middle, because when your meter goes down there, they'll get in the way. So we'll go ahead and put on that gasket first, and then we're gonna go ahead and hook up the green wires, and it doesn't matter which side they go into. And when you tighten this down, don't over torque it. You can break these. It just needs to be nice and snug. Now I ended up marking off the black and the red, just to kind of help me remember where they go. And the black wire will go up to the top, and the red wire will go on the bottom. Now we can go ahead and place that gasket on the back side of the lid. And if you get your screws in there, it'll actually help hold the gasket in place. So I put one on each corner. And then after that, I could put the rest of the screws in. Then we go ahead and tighten this guy down. And this will pretty much get us done with the box. And that's kind of your finished product there. And on this side is where I'm gonna write load just to not forget on where I'm gonna put a certain receptacle, whichever one you guys like. We'll go ahead and strip off the end here. And this stuff here you can see is really easy. You just have to kind of score the outer sheath and you can kind of twist it off and then rip it right off. And then we'll go ahead and cut those little bands off. And then this is the receptacle I'm gonna use. It's a 30 amp RV trailer plug type. I don't really like this particular one, but it just happened to be available at Home Depot. So, which is pretty much where I got all this stuff. We'll go ahead and strip all three of these ends. Now, one thing with wiring this, it's actually really easy because the ground is a certain style plug and it only goes in one place. And that plug has a spot where it says WH, which is for this white wire here, which gets this silver tab. And then the black one only has one other place to go. So it's kind of just a process of elimination. Go ahead and put the ground in first and then do whichever other side you think is easier. I did the black first and then I did the white. Now that all those guys are in there, just kind of do a test fit. And I pretty much leave it like this. I don't put the little rubber cap in there and stuff because sometimes they do change out these ends as I happen to use it for testing other pieces of equipment and other items. And now that we're done with that, we'll move on to the other side. Same thing, go ahead and strip the end. And we'll twist all these together. 
Now this receptacle, I'm just using this, but you guys really should have this in a junction box or something else because this does have exposed ends on it and you can hurt yourself. You see those little tabs? If you go ahead and kind of grab on all that, you can electrocute yourself. So put this in a junction box or something else, but this is just for demonstration purposes so I can show you the meter. I'm not really showing you which ends to put on it because that's up to you guys. So we're gonna get this all dialed in finish it up and then we'll take it outside here in just a minute to kind of show you how it all works and there's your finished product so now we'll take it outside i'm going to plug it into my rv trailer real quick so i have a 50 amp plug that i have a 30 amp dog bone and boom that guy comes up now i'm going to go ahead and plug in the trailer real quick and you'll see some power come on in just a second and so now you can see that the trailer's plugged in, the converter's running in there and probably a couple lights. You can see it's drawing a certain amount of watts and a certain amount of amps. And other than that, this meter is pretty much done. Smash that like button and I hope you liked the video.